Q1, which information should be reported to the State Board of Nursing. The facility fails to provide literature in both Spanish and English. The narcotic count has been incorrect on the unit for the past three days. The client fails to receive an itemized account of his bills and services received during his hospital stay. The nursing assistant assigned to the client with hepatitis fails to feed the client and give the bath. Q2. The rationale for inserting a French catheter every hour for the client with epidural anesthesia is, the bladder fills more rapidly because of the medication used for the epidural. Her level of consciousness is such that she is in a trance-like state. The sensation of the bladder filling is diminished or lost. She is embarrassed to ask for the bedpan that frequently. Q3. The nurse is suspected of charting medication administration that he did not give. After talking to the nurse, the charge nurse should call the board of nursing, file a formal reprimand, terminate the nurse, charge the nurse with a tort. Q4. After the physician performs an amniotomy, the nurse's first action should be to assess the degree of cervical dilation, fetal heart tones, client's vital signs, client's level of discomfort. Q5, the home health nurse is planning for the day's visits. Which client should be seen first? The 78-year-old who had a gastrectomy three weeks ago and has a PEG tube. The five-month-old discharged one week ago with pneumonia who is being treated with amoxicillin liquid suspension. The 50-year-old with MRSA being treated with vancomycin via a PICC line. The 30-year-old with an exacerbation of multiple sclerosis being treated with cortisone via a centrally placed venous catheter. Q6, the client taking gliberide. Dear Beta, should be cautioned to avoid eating sweets. Report changes in urinary pattern. Allow three hours for onset. Check the glucose daily. Q7. The nurse is discussing meal planning with the mother of a two-year-old. Which of the following statements, if made by the mother, would require a need for further instruction? It is okay to give my child white grape juice for breakfast. My child can have a grilled cheese sandwich for lunch. We are going on a camping trip this weekend, and I have bought hot dogs to grill for his lunch. For a snack, my child can have ice cream. Q8. The first action that the nurse should take if she finds the client has an O2 saturation of 68% is elevate the head. Recheck the O2 saturation in 30 minutes. Apply oxygen by mask. Assess the heart rate. Q9. Which action is contraindicated in the client with epiglottis? Ambulation. Oral airway assessment using a tongue blade. Placing a blood pressure cuff on the arm. Checking the deep tendon reflexes. Q10. Which observation would the nurse expect to make after an amniotomy? Dark yellow amniotic fluid. Clear amniotic fluid. Greenish amniotic fluid. Red amniotic fluid. Q11. The nurse is caring for a neonate whose mother is diabetic. The nurse will expect the neonate to be hypoglycemic, small for gestational age, hypoglycemic, large for gestational age, hypoglycemic, large for gestational age, hypoglycemic, small for gestational age. Q12, the elderly client is admitted to the emergency room. Which symptom is the client with a fractured hip most likely to exhibit? Pain. 
Disalignment. Cool extremity. Absence of pedal pulses. Q13. The nurse is teaching a pregnant client about nutritional needs during pregnancy. Which menu selection will best meet the nutritional needs of the pregnant client? Hamburger patty, green beans, french fries, an iced tea, roast beef sandwich, potato chips, baked beans, and cola. Baked chicken, fruit cup, potato salad, coleslaw, yogurt, an iced tea. Fish sandwich, gelatin with fruit and coffee. Q14. A client elects to have epidural anesthesia to relieve the discomfort of labor. Following the initiation of epidural anesthesia, the nurse should give priority to checking for cervical dilation, placing the client in a supine position, checking the client's blood pressure, obtaining a fetal heart rate. Q15. The client with hyperemesis gravidarum is at risk for developing respiratory alkalosis without dehydration, metabolic acidosis with dehydration, respiratory acidosis without dehydration, metabolic alkalosis with dehydration. Q16. A two-year-old is admitted for repair of a fractured femur and is placed in Bryant's traction, which finding by the nurse indicates that the traction is working properly. The infant no longer complains of pain. The buttocks are 15 degrees off the bed. The legs are suspended in the traction. The pins are secured within the pulley. Q17. The nurse is aware that the best way to prevent postoperative wound infection in the surgical client is to administer a prescribed antibiotic. Wash her hands for two minutes before care. Wear a mask when providing care. Ask the client to cover her mouth when she coughs. Q18. Before administering eardrops to a toddler, the nurse should recognize that it is essential to consider which of the following. The age of the child. The child's weight. The developmental level of the child. The IQ of the child. Q19. What would the nurse expect the admitting assessment to reveal in a client with glomerulonephritis? Hypertension. Lassitude. Fatigue, vomiting and diarrhea. Q20, the nurse notes variable decelerations on the fetal monitor strip. The most appropriate initial action would be to notify her doctor. Start and four, reposition the client. Readjust the monitor. Q21, a newborn with narcotic abstinence syndrome is admitted to the nursery. Nursing care of the newborn should include teaching the mother to provide tactile stimulation, wrapping the newborn snugly in a blanket, placing the newborn in the infant seat, initiating an early infant stimulation program. Q22. The nurse knows that a 60-year-old female client's susceptibility to osteoporosis is most likely related to lack of exercise, hormonal disturbances, lack of calcium, genetic predisposition. Please don't forget like and subscribe. Thank you. Q23. The mother calls the clinic to report that her newborn has a rash on his forehead and face. Which action is most appropriate? Tell the mother to wash the face with soap and apply powder. Tell her that 30% of newborns have a rash that will go away by one month of life. Report the rash to the doctor immediately. Ask the mother if anyone else in the family has had a rash in the last six months. Q24. A vaginal exam reveals a footling breech presentation.
The nurse should take which of the following actions at this time? Anticipate the need for a caesarean section. Apply an internal fetal monitor. Place the client in genupectoral position. Perform an ultrasound. Q25, which of the following foods, if selected by the mother with a child with celiac, would indicate her understanding of the dietary instructions? Whole wheat toast. Angel hair pasta. Reuben on rye. Rice cereal. Q26, the emergency room is flooded with clients injured in a tornado. Which clients can be assigned to share a room in the emergency department during the disaster? A client having auditory hallucinations and the client with ulcerative colitis. The client who is pregnant and the client with a broken arm. A child who is cyanotic with severe dyspnea and a client with a frontal head injury. The client who arrives with a large puncture wound to the abdomen and the client with chest pain. Q27. The nurse is discussing breastfeeding with a postpartum client. Breastfeeding is contraindicated in the postpartum client with diabetes, HIV, hypertension, thyroid disease. Q28. A client with diabetes asks the nurse for advice regarding methods of birth control. Which method of birth control is most suitable for the client with diabetes? Intrauterine device. Oral contraceptives. Diaphragm. Contraceptive sponge. Q29. A client is admitted to the labor and delivery unit. The nurse performs a vaginal exam and determines that the client's cervix is 5 cm dilated with 75% effacement. Based on the nurse's assessment, the client is in which phase of labor? Active. Latent. Transition. Early. Q30. The client has an order for sliding scale insulin at 1900 hours and lantus insulin at the same hour. The nurse should administer the two medications together. Administer the medications in two injections. Draw up the lantus insulin and then the regular insulin and administer them together. Contact the doctor because these medications should not be given to the same client. Q31. Which of the following instructions should be included in the nurse's teaching regarding oral contraceptives? Weight gain should be reported to the physician. An alternate method of birth control is needed when taking antibiotics. If the client misses one or more pills, Two pills should be taken per day for one week. Changes in the menstrual flow should be reported to the physician. Q32. Which assignment should not be performed by the nursing assistant? Feeding the client. Bathing the client. Obtaining a stool. Administering a fleet enema. Q33. A vaginal exam reveals that the cervix is 4 cm dilated, with intact membranes and a fetal heart tone rate of 160-170 bpm. The nurse decides to apply an external fetal monitor. The rationale for this implementation is, the cervix is closed. The membranes are still intact. The fetal heart tones are within normal limits. The contractions are intense enough for insertion of an internal monitor. Q34. The obstetric client's fetal heart rate is 80 to 90 during the contractions. The first action the nurse should take is reposition the monitor. Turn the client to her left side. Ask the client to ambulate. Prepare the client for delivery. Q35. 
A client tells the doctor that she is about 20 weeks pregnant. The most definitive sign of pregnancy is elevated human chorionic gonadotropin. The presence of fetal heart tones, uterine enlargement, breast enlargement and tenderness. Q36, a 25-year-old client with a goiter is admitted to the unit. What would the nurse expect the admitting assessment to reveal? Slow pulse. Anorexia. Bulging eyes. Weight gain. Q37. As the client reaches 6 cm dilation, the nurse notes late decelerations on the fetal monitor. What is the most likely explanation of this pattern? The baby is sleeping. The umbilical cord is compressed. There is head compression. There is uteroplacental insufficiency. Q38, which nurse should not be assigned to care for the client with a radium implant for vaginal cancer? The LPN who is six months postpartum. The RN who is pregnant. The RN who is allergic to iodine. The RN with a three-year-old at home. Q39. Which of the following is a characteristic of an ominous periodic change in the fetal heart rate? A fetal heart rate of 120-130 BPM. A baseline variability of 6-10 BPM. Accelerations in FHR with fetal movement. A recurrent rate of 90-100 BPM at the end of the contractions. Q40. The following are all nursing diagnoses appropriate for a gravida 1 para 0 in labor. Which one would be most appropriate for the prima gravida as she completes the early phase of labor? Impaired gas exchange related to hyperventilation. Alteration in placental perfusion related to maternal position. Impaired physical mobility related to fetal monitoring equipment. Potential fluid volume deficit related to decreased fluid intake. Please don't forget like and subscribe. Thank you. Q41. A client in the family planning clinic asks the nurse about the most likely time for her to conceive. The nurse explains that conception is most likely to occur when estrogen levels are low. Luteinizing hormone is high. The endometrial lining is thin. The progesterone level is low. Q42. A client with AIDS has a viral load of 200 copies per mil. The nurse should interpret this finding as, the client is at risk for opportunistic diseases. The client is no longer communicable. The client's viral load is extremely low so he is relatively free of circulating virus. The client's T-cell count is extremely low. Q43. The physician has ordered an injection of Rogam for the postpartum client whose blood type is a negative but whose baby is O positive. To provide postpartum prophylaxis, Rogam should be administered within 72 hours of delivery, within one week of delivery, within two weeks of delivery, within one month of delivery. Q44, a client tells the nurse that she plans to use the rhythm method of birth control. The nurse is aware that the success of the rhythm method depends on the age of the client, frequency of intercourse, regularity of the menses, range of the client's temperature. Q45, the nurse is teaching a group of prenatal clients about the effects of cigarette smoke on fetal development. Which characteristic is associated with babies born to mothers who smoked during pregnancy? Low birth weight. Large for gestational age. Preterm birth. 
but appropriate size for gestation. Growth retardation in weight and length. Q46, arterial ulcers are best described as ulcers that are smooth in texture, have irregular borders, are cool to touch, are painful to touch. Q47, a priority nursing diagnosis for a child being admitted from surgery following a tonsillectomy is altered nutrition. Impaired communication. Risk for injury aspiration. Altered urinary elimination. Q48. A client telephones the emergency room stating that she thinks that she is in labor. The nurse should tell the client that labor has probably begun when her contractions are two minutes apart. She has back pain and a bloody discharge. She experiences abdominal pain and frequent urination. Her contractions are five minutes apart. Q49. The doctor suspects that the client has an ectopic pregnancy. Which symptom is consistent with a diagnosis of a ruptured ectopic pregnancy? Painless vaginal bleeding. Abdominal cramping. Throbbing pain in the upper quadrant. Sudden, stabbing pain in the lower quadrant. Q50. A client is admitted to the labor and delivery unit complaining of vaginal bleeding with very little discomfort. The nurse's first action should be to assess the fetal heart tones. Check for cervical dilation. Check for firmness of the uterus. Obtain a detailed history.